I, I think the idea of thinking of this as your digital assistant or your, you know, your, your buddy uh, to do your research is, is such a smart way to think about it because I know that when I'm working with it, I'll go ask it a bunch of questions and then I'm off to my next call or my next thing that I was already working on. And then I come back to it later and it's got all the responses and then, and then I can refine and go back and do something else, right? So it's working in the background for me while I'm busy doing something else or on a call, paying attention to a presentation in the podcast. Hello, everybody. This is our uh, first official Armanito podcast about AI. Super Woo! excited to be here today. Uh, I'm your host, Carmel Weinkoop, and we've got Renee and Brenda with us today. We're going to talk about uh, some fun AI stuff. Uh, and I think the first thing we'll do is sort of talk about different kinds of AI. I mean, this has been a topic for decades, but really started to gain some real focus and, and excitement probably last year when ChatGPT was launched. And so we're going to talk a little bit about, we're going to have a series of podcasts, and we're going to talk about large language models like Chad GPT and Bard. By the way, Bard was just renamed Gemini, but that's a different that's a different podcast. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we'll talk about robotic process automation. We'll talk about predictive analytics, all those things as we continue to have sessions. We'll even talk about some industry specific stuff as we go. But today we're gonna focus on large language models and generative AI. So how's everybody doing? Great. Pretty great. great. Be yeah. here. Excellent. Are you guys using large language models and generative AI today in, in what you're doing? Absolutely. I every day, all day, every day. <laughs> Reggie Brenda. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And not all day, every day, um, but definitely <laughs> as much as possible. It's my research assistant and uh, my creative partner. Yeah, for sure. Same here. I mean, I'm using it to create content and PowerPoint and images and all kinds of good stuff. Uh, I logged into my ChatGPT this morning and um, just went through the number of uh, searches that I've done in the last uh, year, and it's well in the 200s. <laughs> and I went, wow, this is actually pretty cool. I hadn't looked at it in that way before. I was like, oh, it's actually done a lot of stuff in here. Um, Renee, I know that I saw a post the other day on LinkedIn where you actually named, you renamed ChatGPT for your personal assistant. What did you name it? <laughs> I named it Sparky and it's a she. I want, you know, really, Brenda, you mentioned it. It's kind of like a sidekick. I really feel like it's, you know, I, I built a relationship with this robot, right? This, this thing that's out there. And when I'm working and collaborating, I love to know who I'm working with. And in this case, even though I know it's a robot, I know it's, you know, bits and bytes and algorithms, it feels fun to actually name my partner. And, and my partner apologizes to me when she gets things wrong and she says, I'll try again. And come on, Sparky, we can do better. So, <laughs> and oh. she actually came up, up, came up with a list of names. Um, so I pose that truly as a, a prompt and said, I'd like to come up with a name. And would you suggest some? And I had about 10 different choices and Sparky jumped out. So, yeah. That's fantastic. Do you say please and thank you to Sparky? I do. Oh my God, I do. <laughs> Every time. I, you know, I, mean, I apologize me? to chairs when I bump into them. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so, you're, so your large language model is no different. Yeah, it's fantastic. I was on a webinar once and somebody said, you really need to just think about prompting ChatGPT as mansplaining. You just don't need to be polite you just need to give it the facts and not overthink the, you know, the politeness. And, but I can't help it. One I can't day, do it. Yeah, yeah. I can't do it either. I'm always saying please and thank you. And, oh, would you mind if, I know you just gave me 15, but would you mind reducing this to a only five, and can you make it a little bit funnier, a little bit more serious? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Train you got to train it with all of those those characteristics and help refine it. And I love hearing when people say that they're that they're engaging in it, that they're training that prompt, that they're refining it, rather than taking those fifteen that that they gave you and then reworking them yourself. That doesn't give the model a chance to learn your style, what you're looking for, how how they can be better. 
because as Renee, they're always like, how can I do better for you? Like they're, yeah. they're always looking to help. Um, they're tireless. And so I think really when you lean in on it, I was watching a, another podcast the other day or YouTube um, and they were talking about um, being able um, to actually train it to find what your um, what your style is so that you don't have to put in all of that persona and stuff every time. It's just right there. It knows what you want. It's got your style down that over time, like, yeah, it may take a little bit longer now, but anything you, when, whenever you're starting something new, it takes a little bit longer, but it's going to pay off in the long run because you're going to have to do that maybe 10 times now, but then never again. Right. Um, and yeah. sometimes you're going to have to go back to retraining or, or have a different, you know, different thread that has a different hat on for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to jump in, Carmel, with yeah. uh, right, right there and kind of follow on with Brenda, because for me, the biggest pro tip that I found with ChatGPT is going down to my name. It used to be three dots. Now there's no three dots. But on the left hand column there, it says customize ChatGPT. It used to say customize instructions, but it literally gives you two fields. It asks two questions. And, and, and it's so simple because the first question is, what would you like ChatGPT to know about you to provide better responses? And that's what Brenda's talking about. I literally dumped in my entire biography, personal, you know, uh, my background, and just used every bit of the 1,500 characters. And then the second box said, how would you like ChatGPT to respond? And to me, that's the relationship or the partnership that I'm creating with my robot, right? With yeah. Me. So I, again, just talked about, look, I'm an introvert. I can go on too long with a story. I'm looking for a partner who's going to help me articulate things in a succinct, colorful, warm manner, right? And so I yeah. did in my writing style said, this is, this is what I enjoy. And for whatever read, however it works, now the response and the dialogue with ChatGPT feels much more personal, much more customized. And then that's that sidekick factor that we're talking about, right? You're literally yeah. training it to know how best to work with each individual. That's yeah. amazing to me. That is amazing. And I, I will say that, you know, our personalities are probably opposite. You're, you, you can go on for a long time. My whole life is in bullets. So I actually go to chat GPT to, can you please extend this one sentence or this one word into a paragraph so that I don't look like I'm completely cold and have no feelings. Um, but, but that's awesome. I, I love the idea that we're uh, customizing the way that the responses are responding to each individual, right? And I, I agree with you. I think those two fields are uh, really powerful. And, uh, you know, and we see that and we talk about, uh, and I know we're just calling it ChatGPT, but this could be any of the public uh, large language models that are out there. Um, this just happens to be the one that we're all sort of playing with right now today on this call. But, um, you know, I, I I think the idea of thinking of this as your digital assistant or your, you know, your your buddy uh, to do your research is is such a smart way to think about it, because I know that when I'm working with it, I'll go ask it a bunch of questions and then I'm off to my next call or my next thing that I was already working on. And then I come back to it later and it's got all the responses and then, and then I can refine and go back and do something else. Right. So it's working in the background for me while I'm busy doing something else or on a call, paying attention to a presentation, doing a podcast, uh, right? And so, I mean, I think that's, th th if we think about it from a, uh, you know, optimizing your time and being able to be more proficient, it's kind of amazing. I don't know, do you guys feel like it's changed the way that you work? Yeah, it's changed the way I think about work as well, because I think, you know, my, my whole career, I've been an accountant. I'm a technical accountant. I'm a CPA. And now I'm in a role that I am required to be very creative. You know, accountants mm -hmm. are generally discouraged from being very creative for very good reasons, right? Yeah, don't and be so creative with those numbers. That's <laughs> not good. <laughs> and so it's it's been nice, like letting it come out again. But there is nothing scarier than a blank sheet of paper. Yeah. So oh. I use it to get me thinking. Um, yeah. to get like, okay, what can I start? Like, give me a first draft. Is it perfect? No, but it gives me a place like, okay, let, let's lean in on that first paragraph there. I really like that. 
you know, how can we expand on that? What are some other things I should consider? Um, and really using it, like I said um, in the intro, like a research assistant. Like, yeah. sure, I could go to Google and I could look up all of that stuff, but it's got my persona. It knows what I want from it. It knows what my role is. It knows what I'm looking to do. And so it's a much better qualified search. Like, I sure, I could put a 3,000 word search into Google and it's going to say zero results because that's a lot of words, right? Um, but I am able to add all of that context and persona and also what I'm looking from it already embedded in it, I'm getting a much better first draft. Do I need to fact check it? Oh yeah, I sure do. Um, yeah. But a lot of the stuff I'm doing is not something that needs to be fact checked. It's like, right. hey, what are some considerations in this kind of environment or for this sort of scenario? Um, or I'm going into a meeting about this type of thing. Um, so really, you know, that flexibility to pull up information and consolidate it from multiple places in a bulleted list that's easily digestible has been a game changer. Yeah, that's fantastic. I think my heater just kicked on, so that's great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what about you, Renee? Uh, oh, same as Brenda. So we're opposites in the fact that I am a communicator. I'm My background is marketing and communications. I was a client of Armanino and hired Armanino to take care of the numbers, right? So that, <laughs> that's not my thing. But what I find myself doing in my role now is learning about new industries that I didn't previously have experience with. My background is really, you know, with technology companies, but now I'm learning about nonprofit and healthcare and real estate and and how do you get up to speed quickly in these areas? Well, it feels awkward when you're a novice and you're trying to ask people who don't have time, right? Yeah, yeah. You don't have to be embarrassed when you ask Sparky in this case, That's right? right? <laughs> I can ask all the dumb questions and it doesn't make me feel bad. Yeah. And I can dive deeper. I can take it in any direction, right? And ask not just what's happened historically, but what's happening now. And I know yeah. that so we can talk about that too. There's a little gap between what's what information is currently available and searchable and accessible versus his more historical. But that window is is getting smaller and smaller. We know. Yeah, for so. sure. For sure, for sure. And I think the other thing that's interesting too, right? Um, I mean, we say Google as it's if a as if it is a verb now, right? That's how we think about that. But if you look at if you're doing Google searches for things, the, the thing, the difference between like a chat GPT and a large language model generative AI type model and Google is Google's going to give you results for everything that's on the internet. You still have to do all the research there. You still <laughs> have to do all the reading. You still have to dig through file by file to figure out which thing you want to use. The beautiful part about the generative AI, Sparky, mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to steal your name for a second, uh, is that it will do the work for you, right? And we... I always use this example, and it's not a work example, but it's fun. Uh, There's a basketball player who was looking for a car. He's seven feet and some change, right? And wanted a car with lots of headroom. Well, if you typed in, give me the best car for a person that's seven feet tall in Google, you're going to get back all the brands of cars. You still get to go do the research by yourself on which ones have the best headroom and legroom for somebody that's seven feet. Where if you put that in, uh, a generative AI model, it will give you back the three cars that have the most headroom and the most legroom for somebody that's at three feet. And then you can just drill in on, okay, well, I, maybe I don't buy Chevys. Maybe I want a Lamborghini. I don't know. I'm just making names up now, but <laughs> right. So then you're just drilling in on those three things instead of uh, trying to search through, you know, 45 different car makers to figure out which one's the right for you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I heard a story recently with someone who had um, a child with just chronic illness, like all kinds of symptoms and had been through so many different doctors. And this woman went and used generative AI and listed all the symptoms of her daughter and was able to pinpoint, right, like kind of self-diagnose, but pinpoint or narrow down to what was the potential cause. And that's crazy to think about how powerful this information is. It's not just all the data to be able to to narrow it down, synthesize it, contextualize it for us. It's yeah. huge. It's a giant yeah. step. It is, it is. And I think that contextualization there is the key, right? So understanding that context and being able to interact with it, which you also can't do with Google. Not that we don't love Google, because we do, but uh, 
but it's, you know, it's just a different, it's a, it's a game changer really in, in productivity. And uh, so when, when this first came out, were there things that you guys were nervous or scared about or you're like, uh Oh, this is like the minority report. I don't want to have to take my eyes out and figure <laughs> and get new eyeballs. Right. Like, were there things that were like, uh Oh, Terminator's coming. Like, were you guys nervous about this or how did, how did you, how do you think about that? Well, I mean, I just want to go on record saying I welcome our AI overlords. Um, so, uh, no, no, not, not worried, not worried about it. Um, <laughs> So really thinking about it, it's another tool for the toolbox. Like it's another, it's another way to be able to do more with less. I work with a lot of nonprofits, you know, that's their, their directive. How do we do more with less? How do we deal with the staffing shortage? How do we keep yeah. people engaged in, in careers and, and jobs that are rewarding to them, both you know, personally and professionally. Um, and how do we take that mundane stuff that's not a value add, data entry, moving uh, data from one system to another system, reformatting data so that you can do things like that. Those are all great examples of things that can be automated that aren't adding value that just have to be done, but it doesn't yeah. have to be a person that does it. And yeah. so I think the revolutionary, you know, aspect of it is the ability to rethink what requires a human to do um, and to, because there's always going to be jobs that require humans. Like, you know, think about like the, pr the printing press revolutionized books, like, you know, paper was very scarce Then nobody had books in their home, you know, because there was no, like you had to know how to write and write out these long form things. Like, you know, I'm sure people at the time were like, oh, the printing press, that'll never take off. Right. And, and here we are today. Right. And the printing press is almost obsolete because we've gone digital. Right. Yeah. And so it's another evolution of what's next, I think. I love that. Brenda. I love that. I do too. <laughs> I do too. So, so I'm going to riff off of that too, because I think about, you know, when the calculators came out and, and everyone was like, oh my God, now our students are going to cheat with, you know, like, what do we, what can we do now that we don't spend all our time doing long division, right? Like <laughs> there were so abacus. many. Abacus, right? Yeah. And that was an right? improvement on the abacus. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Technology is always going to, to change things. And there's always going to be fear, right? Because yeah. any change is hard. Um, I, I like to think of myself as kind of an early adopter going back to, you know, college. I was the first in line. My grandmother loaned me some money so I can buy a Macintosh, right? And I have been a diehard Mac fan, you know, for all these years. I think deep down inside, I don't want to be a dinosaur, even though I've had this long career now. I love continuing to learn. Yeah. I, I especially love the generative AI stuff because I am a communicator, because I could see pretty quickly how it could help be um, help me do my job and be more creative, help me be more creative, right? Yeah. Then there's this other aspect of now once I get to see how cool it is, I love helping other people get that glimpse, right? Because at first they're like, oh, it's this AI, oh, the robots are going to take over. And it's, you know, I think it's all part of this big master plan of taking over <laughs> our lives. And to be able to you know, my boss who went by my office several times before I could catch him and finally got five minutes to show what, you know, chat GPT can do and to hear his jaw drop, hear his jaw drop, right? It's, it's, that's a thrill for me, right? Yeah. There's so much more I still have to learn, but to be able to get that spark and, and help other people see the potential, that's a thrill for me. So and it's just going to keep going, right? There's so yeah. much more to learn. Yeah, it is. I liken it to the, you know, when the internet became generally available, right? So, and mm. this is, I'm dating myself here, but that's okay. Uh, everybody was worried about the cheating then too, right? Like, oh, all the students are going to cheat. I mean, I was out of college at this point in time, but, um, you know, it's, it, the cheating, you know, we figured out early adoption, we figured out a way to deal with that and, you know, still get referenceable work and things like that. And I mean, could you even imagine your life without the internet right now? That just seems like an impossibility. And I, mean, I think- not just the internet, the internet in your pocket. Oh yeah. I mean, <laughs> and think about kids growing up right now. Like these kids are going, AI is already part of their life. They talk to Alexa at home and Google at home and it runs their radio and the lights and your car talks to you and tells you what, you know, like 
all these things are already out there that they're using. They're they're going to be so much more like this is just going to be a normal part of their world where we're all, you know, in the adoption phase right now going, how, how do we do this? Do we do this ethically? How do we make sure we're doing this ethically? And I think as long as we have that in the back of our mind, we're we're good. Um, all right. So one of the things about this podcast is we don't have a name yet for it. We we started out, we said, this is Armanino's first podcast about AI. Yay, no name. It's the no name <laughs> podcast. I mean, maybe it ends up being the no name cup podcast. I don't know. But I thought it could be fun if we all went to our respective generative AI uh, sparkies mm -hmm. and uh, played with that a little bit to see if we could come up with a fun and entertaining name for our podcast. Here's one, Robo Reconciliation. A fun Ooh, I like on that. AI and accounting. <laughs> I like it. I think just to go back to one thing you said too, Renee, like you're a communicator. So you're, 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 you're using this to help you expand that where I think, you know, we talked about earlier too, I talk in bullets. So I'm not always the best communicator. Like I actually start emails with, Make sure this gets done, blah, 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 blah. And then I have to go back and go, hi, how are you? I hope you had a nice day, right? I just, it's not in my nature. And so I actually use ChatGPT to be a better communicator because I know I'm not good at it. And so it helps me be a little softer than what I normally would show up as, which has been really interesting because now I'm learning from it, which is also scary, but in a good way, right? Like it's, it's kind of awesome. Okay, sorry, back to names. Okay. Okay, so I've got bite-sized wisdom, AI unplugged conversations on A that go uh, that get to Ooh. the heart of what it means to innovate and connect. I kind of like that. Everybody knows the unplugged, right, from musical references and stuff. Yeah. Um, AI whisperers, which I thought was I like that. Um, some of these other ones, neural pathways. No, thank you. The sentient thread. No, thank you. Uh, I don't know. What do you have, Brenda? You know. I've been refining this. All of mine are kind of like two part ones because I wanted it to be kind of fun about AI and accounting. Um, and I, I think I might need to do a little bit more refining because I like some of them, but not others. So some of them are um, bite size balance, uh, bots and books, um, decimal delights, <laughs> decimal delights, tally tales. <laughs> I like that. Um, but what do we got? Whimsical worksheets. Uh, then we've got uh, AI explorations for accountants. That's not really as fun, I think. AI antics in accounting. I do love alliteration. Mm -hmm. uh, the AI yeah. bean counter show. <laughs> Pretty good, too. Oh. I got uh, robots with attitude. <laughs> I got robots in disguise. <laughs> oh, I like that too. Interesting. There's one that's AI got this. AI got this. Oh, I kind of like that. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, and then series silly cousin. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he giggles. Yeah. I mean, do that. There's one. I think I got, um, I, I refined this a little bit. Bits and bucks. Ooh. Bites and bucks. Mm. That's okay, nice here's, here's a clever one. Tales from the script. A whimsical journey through AI <laughs> from fascinating stories. That's pretty good too. That's pretty good. <laughs> well, we're gonna have to take a vote. Uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> you guys have, are you passionate about one of them? What was your, I liked yours. AI got this. I don't know. Yeah. It's just, to me, that's it's super short. It, it, for anybody who might be intimidated, it's like okay, you, we, you know, you got this. Yeah, you, know? you got it. I. You like that one? I like that one. All right. That could be kind of fun. We can we could have some fun with that. Right. It's kind of um. It's kind of intentional in in you know right. It's setting yeah. an intention. We got we got this. We do got this. And so. I mean, and it it is, I do think that we're in a, you know, we talked a little bit too, we're in that sort of adoption phase. And and this is sort of the a way to go, not only do we got this, everybody who comes on this podcast, but we can help you got this, right? Like Ooh. we can help you get this. Let's put our arms around you and we can guide you through this process because it's 
it doesn't have to be scary and and uh you know the, the war warlord warlord robots <laughs> coming to get you they, they can actually we're not you. how we're not building how that's right that's right it's just it can be it can just be uh sort of an embrace of the technology and how do we use it in a way that is you know going to be uh super effective for all of us and help us in our jobs i think and in our life really yeah, Carmel, I think that's perfect. I think you can take it in a lot of different directions. And just the fact that it is so succinct, right, as the communicator of the group here, right, it, it, that conveys, right, it's not overwhelming. We, we see some of these, these um, you know, conference sessions or, you know, webinars with these big, long, right, complicated, yeah. um, you know, topic descriptions. And you're just like, hell no. <laughs> it <laughs> sounds like a lot of work just to, like, you know, participate. Yeah. So, yeah, we want to make it accessible. We want people to to understand that this is just another tool and yet it can be so transformative on our daily basis or moving our business forward in huge leaps by pushing the work to, you know, the Sparkies or the, you know, what, whatever you decide to name it. Your digital um, assistant of the day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I love this that. Is- this is the future. Like if you're not going to get behind AI, somebody else is. And yeah. so the risk is that you you get left behind. And so right. I think, I think there's a lot to think about, about ways that you can automate and, and things that you can ask, you know, the, the bots to do. Do you want it to, you know, come up with, you know, your, your life plan and, you know, do everything for that? Probably not, but can it help you craft a good schedule for the week to help you get everything done that you want to get done? Yeah, it could probably do a pretty good job of that, um, helping helping the time box. So I think thinking about how can you take some of the mental load off yourself um, yeah. and put it into a bot? And how can you do that for your team as a leader, um, as a manager, you know, working in an organization? What can you do as an organization to to take some of those, the, that mental load that needs to be done that that nobody actually has to do. It just needs to get done. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, so so my sister-in-law is a 10 time Grammy winning, Grammy winning musician with a musical jazz group. Wow. And they were nominated for a Grammy last year. And I asked her, I said, so have you written your acceptance speech? If you guys win, she's like, oh, hell no, right? They're musicians. And so I said, hmm, let's see what ChatGPT can do. And so we sat down and it spit out the most amazing, like word for word referencing historical things. Cause obviously that's, you know, available yeah. online, right? It, it paid um, homage to their founder. It thanked all the right people. She was absolutely blown away. So again, I have no background <laughs> in her world, but I was able to add value. If we can do things like that for our clients, right? Or yep. the people that we love, right? What a gift. We're just what using a gift. the tool. Yeah, that's exactly right. What a great way to end too, right? Like what a gift. And really it is it's it is about, try it. Just go play with it. See what you can find. And and that's that's how you start learning and, and playing around with it and be the leader in your organization or in your family or whatever and, and play around with it and then show other people how to play around with it and be smart about it and don't put like your social security number or anything in there. But, you know, let's just <laughs> and and that'll be great. OK, well, I think uh, AI Got This is our new name. Woo! And, uh, <laughs> I think we're, I think we're good. So thank you guys both for being here with me today. Super appreciate it. I think this was super fun and hopefully a little bit educational for folks. And maybe everybody will go out there and name their, name their favorite generative AI tool, put their personalization in where they can and, uh, and be able to create the world. Yeah. Change the world. That's right. (laughs) So next time on AI Got This is uh, we're going to talk a little bit about robotic process automation. And uh, I believe Lauren Redinger is going to be our guest next time. So, all right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Bye.